So p53 mutations are uh, the most important recurrent mutations, not only in CLL, and we can say that uh, as it is more Im most important oncogene in general. Uh, so in CLL it has uh, some special role because uh, it has also a clinical relevance. Uh, the gene is known to be mutated in about half of the cancers, uh, but uh, for most of the cancers uh, these mutations are not used uh, for the clinic uh, for treatment of patients, just for prognostication and uh, these mutations are not usually tested in other cancers, but for CLL it's totally different role. We really use them in clinical practice, we use them for prognostication and also for uh, treatment decision making. Well, recently most of the laboratories uh, were using Sanger sequencing and uh, all the data from the clinical studies are based on Sanger sequencing, which is, uh, has uh, its limitations, despite it can be all still considered as some gold standard. Uh, currently, NGS is uh, taking its, r its role, and uh, so we are in the new era <laughs> of uh, testing by next generation sequencing when we are able to uh, catch the mutations that are present uh, in minor clones we can we can speak about clones that are 1% uh, of the of the cancer cell fraction and the next generation sequencing can detect these clones the other thing is the clinical significance of these of these clones because we don't know that yet uh, in the clinic uh, uh, the presence of the P53 mutation means that the patient will most likely have aggressive clinical curves. Uh, the patients progress very soon and they also unfortunately still dying very soon. Uh, they can't be treated with standard chemoimmunotherapy. These days, uh, uh, let's say they, uh, their uh, future seems a bit better because we have the targeted agents that are, that are aimed specifically for these uh, patients and uh, uh, these, these patients with the P53 mutations uh, are, have a, have a better, better prognosis and they live longer when they take the targeted treatments.